Hey everyone! This video is exciting because it's after work, it's after office hours, and I've got daddy here at home with me to be in this video. For a while I've been wanting to do a conversation about what it's actually like to be a Spanko in a relationship with another Spanko, because I know that it's very easy to kind of idealize relationships like this, especially when you are feeling unsatisfied, when you can't find someone, when you maybe don't even have play partners to scratch the itch. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about what makes being in a relationship with another Spanko so amazing, but also about the details that make it just a normal relationship like any other with all the complications and challenges that any other relationship might have. So I've got a list of questions that my Discord friends and other people who watch this channel have sent me, and we're just gonna riff. Let's go. We've been joking all week that um, this video is just going to be us talking shit about each other for half an hour, um, but <laughs> we've got some good things to say too. So let's get into it. Before we get started, I know some people asked how we met, so I'll just do a quick um, summary of the story. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be useful advice for anyone, uh, because the way we met was rather unusual. Um, because I did talk about spanking and put myself out there on public platforms, um, I just made myself very findable. So the way we met is that Daddy had read my article in the New York Times, in which I outed myself as a spanking fetishist and um, wrote a little bit about that. Then he had followed some other articles I had subsequently written, both about spanking and about non-spanking topics. For lack of a better phrase, he became a fan. and. Uh, it's like seven years ago, I was in Zimbabwe at the time, and he sent an email to my account just saying that he had enjoyed my work and telling me a little bit about himself. And he got an auto response. <laughs> he got an out of, uh, I'm out of the country, will respond as soon as possible auto response. And I do try to respond to every email I get, but some things do slip through the cracks and daddy slipped through the cracks. Uh, so I did not respond to his email. But um, after that, he followed me on Twitter. And at one point I was working on, I was prepping for uh, an interview I was going to do with Dan Savage for his podcast. And I tweeted something like, hey, are there any perverts out there who want to uh, go over this thing I'm preparing for Dan Savage and give me some feedback? And he slid into my DMs. It's a, it's a tale as old as time. <laughs> so. <laughs> I recognize that this is not a very repeatable uh, way to meet for most people, but I do think the bottom line is, if you don't make yourself findable, no one's going to find you. So maybe you don't want to out yourself in the New York Times or write a book like I did, but you can join an online community, start talking to people. You can go to a national party and meet people face to face. Um, you got to make yourself findable because if you don't, you won't be found. Again, if I can just add, I was not trying to hit on you at all, right? Like at all. I was just reaching out and I wanted to be friends. And we were fr friends for like three years. Yeah. Um, and legitimately looking to make friends who are Spankos is a great way to meet people. Like whether or not it's actually, you know, I didn't ever expect to be with you. Well, there's no downside to making there's no, friends. Right, you either, worst case scenario, you get friends. Best case scenario, you get friends and maybe someone extra special. So like, I was just trying to- Make I, friends. And I, right, even just being friends with you, I thought was so cool. Oh, I thought it was cool too. I'm still a big fan. What, oh. do you, what do you mean was a fan? I'm still a big fan. Um, the last bit of this though, is when we then met, finally met in person, I, she was like in Europe, in Norway actually. And she's like, hey, do you want to come have a drink? And so I flew out to Norway to go meet her, yeah. which is a ridiculous thing to do. Yeah. But like, that is kind of, the, that kind of thing is also the kind of thing, if you can, if you're lucky enough to be able to do that kind of thing. And like, there's a Spanko who you click with and you become friends with and they want to meet you. And like, if you can, then you gotta do crazy things like that. So the first question on our list is, how did we make our long distance relationship work? We're very lucky now, right? Like with technology, it's never been easier with, you know, these days, it's pretty amazing. You can call internationally for free. You can text internationally for free. You can do video calls, which was sci-fi when we were kids. <laughs> so, so that makes such a difference. Being able to chat all the time makes such a difference. 
Yeah, and from a dynamic perspective, something that daddy did in the first four years of our relationship while we were living on different continents that I think really helped is he was very, very diligent and intentional about keeping a list of infractions on his phone. When you live in different cities or different states or even different countries, like a lot of spanking fetishists in romantic relationships or disciplinary dynamics do, it can be very easy to forget the little day-to-day -day things that happen. It can be easy to forget an infraction. If you're a top and your bottom you know, says something rude or does something disobedient or something like that. Um, it can be very easy to say, oh, like, I'm very disappointed in you. You're going to get it next time I see you, but then kind of let it slip your mind. So, and that, and that can be super devastating for bottoms. It really can. So uh, I think that something that really helped make our relationship work and our dynamic work when we were long distance is daddy worked very hard to not forget anything. He was very diligent about keeping notes on his phone. So I knew if he said to me, we're gonna discuss this when I see you in three weeks, we actually were going to discuss it when I saw him in three weeks. And that was hot, that was sexy. I, I appreciated it. To be clear, I still have a list. And actually, I find it really useful even now that we're not long distance because when you're in a relationship like, like we are, obviously there's lots of real life going on, yeah. right? And sometimes it's not, sometimes when I come home from work, isn't the right time to talk about something. So sometimes it might be, you know, several days before there's a good opportunity to, to talk about something. So I still have that list now. I still keep the list. It's still useful. Okay, so our next question is, how is being in a relationship with another Spanko different than what you expected? Okay, um, it's different than, obviously when we first got together, right? It was so incredibly exciting and we just, you know, we just played all the time. New relationship New energy. relationship energy is real. It's, Up the wazoo. Right, which is amazing. New relationship energy is really fun. Yes. Obviously that is unsustainable. <laughs> like when you've been together almost six years or whatever that we have, um, then obviously we don't play as much as I once imagined that we would do. Um, so that is a surprise, but the nice surprise is that that's like absolutely fine. <laughs> like that really, that's not a, like a negative, that's not a problem. Yeah. Like, you know, there's real things going on. We're both busy or tired or... For me, I would say the crazy hunger has subsided. I remember when we were on trail and we were so freaking calorie depleted and so hungry, I felt like I could have eaten yeah. you know, 10 pizzas a day. Similarly, when I was very sexually unsatisfied, I wanted 10 spankings a day. Yeah. Um, but now that I have enough food and now that I am sexually satisfied, my hunger for both of those things doesn't dominate my life. Mm. Um, and I think that's kind of great. No, that is actually nice. That's a very good way to explain it. I think like we're not as desperate as we were, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. I don't want to be so desperate that I want to play all the time. Like, you know, we've got a real life. I'm gonna, I have notes here that we took of all the questions, but also like a one sentence uh, bit of notes about how we wanted to answer the question. And in our notes for how is being in a relationship with another spanking fetishist different than what you expected, daddy wrote, one, we play less than I imagined we would, but two, that's fine. <laughs> so Yes. <laughs> um, what I wrote is that something that's very interesting to me is I did not fully understand or accept how sex ambivalent I am mm. until I started dating daddy. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, we started dating when we were 30. It seems so late to realize something so fundamental um, about ourselves. Yeah. But I think there's just so much messaging and conditioning from culture saying that everyone is into sex and everyone enjoys it. And if you don't enjoy it, something's wrong with you. Um, that I, it wasn't really until we started dating and kind of, recognized our mutual ambivalence that we were like, wait, we, we don't even want to have sex. We just want to do butt stuff and that's fine. And it wasn't even like straight away after we started dating. Yeah. It took like a year of dating a Spanko. Yeah. So like it really, a full year to really realize that like I didn't really care if I ever had sex. Yeah. And, and that's 
we've had sex. We've had good sex. You gave me the greatest orgasm that anyone has ever given me. To be clear, when I say anyone, I am talking about three people. So the list is short, but I don't know. It's not my orientation. Yeah, when, when we got together, I thought that was, I did want to do that like fairly regularly and it was important to me. And um, I was wrong. <laughs> it's no, it was really fascinating. And I honestly, honestly, without dating a Spanko, I don't think I ever would have realized. Oh yeah, no, uh, absolutely not. Yeah. Because our chemistry when we play, our play chemistry yeah. is so incredible um, that it sort of highlights when the chemistry is not incredible, when the chemistry is ambivalent. Yeah, and I was so crazy about you. I had such a desire to be intimate with you. And yeah. there, there, had been, there had been so much messaging that that's like the ultimate way to be intimate. Yeah. That like, I didn't, hadn't yet fully understood that I would get every bit as much intimacy from just doing our thing. Yeah, so so um, to review the notes from this <laughs> useful conversation we were making for the internet, uh, one, we don't play as much as we thought we would, and two, we also don't like sex, so. Just don't, like, so we don't like, just absolutely don't care. Aren't we aspirational? Just really don't care about the one time a year we have sex. <laughs> okay, question three. What are the biggest advantages of being in a relationship with another Spanko? So finally, finally, we get to say something good about each other. Right. I think the biggest advantage is something that you and I have talked about quite a lot. Yeah. Which is the white noise. Yeah. That's how we describe it. We feel like, and I know that you feel this way too because we've talked about it. We feel like before we had like a dynamic and a relationship with another Spanko, there was always this white noise in the background. Just like always there, this sort of this sort of thing in the in the background, this frustrating like white noise that wouldn't shut up and that was sort of always at risk of distracting us from where, whatever was going on. And that was this desperation, this unfulfilled sexual desire. And once we were together, once we were in a dynamic, what I've experienced, I know you've said that you've experienced it too, is that white noise has gone away, which is so amazing. I now find myself sometimes not thinking about spanking. Yeah. Right. Which, which, like, I did, like, like for, seriously, for like hours. Sometimes I will go real amounts of time without thinking about spanking. And, like, that is such a relief, actually, yeah. because, like, sometimes I need to, you know, do work or, like, just, you know, it's, there's just this amazing, I'm so much, I'm just calmer within myself. I'm just calmer without this desperation, without this white, white noise, just because I'm, and it just comes from being sexually satisfied, from getting to, to live my sexual orientation. And it is, it, it, it's just so peaceful. Yeah, um, I've been in a really serious long-term relationship, decade-long marriage uh, to someone who did not share my sexual orientation. And now I've been with, as he said, um, daddy for almost six years. Um, and I, I had really, really underestimated the importance of sexual satisfaction. Um, I agree with the white noise thing. It was just this buzzing in the background. I talked in a recent video about sobbing on a street in Brooklyn outside a party uh, in which no one asked me to play. And that woman feels unrecognizable to me because I can't imagine being that desperate, that unsatisfied today because I haven't felt that way in six years. Um, and it's incredible. Obviously, there are other things that are important besides sexual satisfaction, obviously general vanilla compatibility really matters. But I've had the experience of having a relationship that was extremely compatible in every vanilla way, but not sexually. And I've had the experience of being in a relationship that is compatible in most vanilla ways and definitely sexually and I know which I prefer, so. We, we go to a lot of parties, obviously, with this amazing community. And it's fun being able to go to a party. And I really don't, I enjoy playing and stuff, but I don't, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not worried about, like, it's really, it's just fun to play. It's fun to be there and not play. Like, I really don't mind. And that's so nice. I'm just there to have fun. And I don't really need to get anything. Okay, next, on the other side of the coin, people wanted to know what are the biggest disadvantages of being in a relationship with another spanking fetishist. The biggest disadvantage when you're in a vanilla relationship with the same person that you're also in a 
a dynamic with a power exchange based relationship is that your relationship has some inbuilt like power imbalance, of course, because of the dynamic, right? You're used to having a certain power imbalance mm. and that can make it difficult to deal with some sort of vanilla situations. So particularly if like I need help or like if you're struggling support, if I'm struggling with something that's difficult for us because we're set up for me to help you, you know? Yeah. And that can be stressful and difficult because I, I don't always feel very comfortable. I don't feel comfortable wanting help from you. You don't feel, you, you don't feel, it doesn't seem like you feel very com comfortable when looking it after me. It challenges our dynamic yeah. when I need to be the caregiver. When you need to look after me, it challenges the way, it, because of the vanilla relationship, it challenges our dynamic. And that but you know, honestly, I think that this is probably a problem that pe most people in relationships have. I think so too. I think about totally vanilla marriages and relationships that I've seen. And when they settle into any kind of um, dynamic, for lack of a better word, whether it's like one person makes more money than the other yeah. person, or one person does more of the you know child care than the other person, if something happens to complicate that, if suddenly the person who made more money loses her job, mm -hmm. or suddenly the person who was taking um, more of the child care responsibilities um, gets injured and he's unable to do that anymore. Check what I did with the with the gendered pronouns there. Eh? 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 Um, it, it can complicate those kinds of relationships too. So I don't think that's unique to Spankos or people in power exchange relationships, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I think you're right. Like when you say it, I think actually lots and lots of relationships, including lots of totally non-Spanko ones, settle into a sort of thing where one of them is more of the caregiver than the other. I think that's actually quite normal. I think you're right. Fair enough. I mean, I think that some of the biggest disadvantages of being in a Spanko-Spanko relationship are um, the distance, of course, that a lot of us have to face just because there are so few of us in the world. We kind of have to cast a much wider net to find someone. Um, and also, I think this might be more of an issue with us, us both being out. Um, but sometimes, yeah, there are comments mm -hmm. or jokes that I resent. Um, I know every time Daddy's in a video, um, neck beards on the in internet in the comment section are like, how can that limey red coat possibly be dominant? I'm I'm much more dominant than he could ever be, um, and I definitely roll my eyes at that because obviously no one is more equipped to know what kind of man I would want to submit to than me, um, and I know they're just sort of flexing because they're lonely, uh, but I do like I. I I do wish um, we didn't have to deal with that. Yeah. But that is, like I said, more of an issue about both being out, which leads perfectly into the next question. What has it been like both being out? Um, interesting. I think we probably have slightly different experiences of this. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I really had the, you know, when I started dating Jillian, I had really no choice, like, um, if you to, date... to be clear, when we um, first met and started dating, I had already outed myself as a spanking fetishist in the New York Times and other publications, The Atlantic, Slate, um, and I, my book was, was coming it, out. It just, yeah. well, I think it just come out. Yeah, started, you're right. It yeah, had just, just come, out. come out. So like, you know. So the, I was Googleable. The, but it wasn't say. a YouTube channel yet. It wasn't where it is now. But there was still, you were still very Googleable. And, but it was great. I wanted to come, I really, I wanted to come out to people anyway. And it's, you know, it's good sometimes when you have to do something because then you just do it. So I went on a rampage and for two months I tried to get, like find one, get one-on-one -on -one situations with all my friends and family to yeah. like come out to all of them, all of them individually. Um, and I actually enjoyed it despite the fact that obviously it went a lot better with some than with others. You know, some was a really great experience, some was not so great, but I, I enjoyed coming out to everyone. And I've enjoyed being out. Like, I think I've like not, I don't know. I've been very, I think I've been very, I've been lucky. I, I don't feel like I've had many issues from being out. Um, you work for yourself, which is nice. Right. I work for, I work for myself. Um, my, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've really enjoyed being out. Um, some people had great reactions. Some people not so great. Um, but I've never regretted it. 
at all. I really like the fact that I am also out and I like the fact that I came out so descriptively and publicly years before I met him because I think that if only he were out, I would worry about other people judging him. Um, there is something, you know, stressful about being a man who likes to hit women, um, that the optics there are not great. And so I, I love the fact that I came out first. No one could ever accuse him of having coerced me into this kind of relationship um, because I made it clear long ago that it's what I need. Yeah, and just to say a point on that, it's nice for me that you are so Googleable. It's easy to prove that you're really into it, right? No, because if I, I think if I was telling people, I think there's, you know, I would be worried that they might not believe me. Okay, so I bet this video is getting uh, pretty long because I'm enjoying this conversation so much. So I think we're gonna split this one into two parts. So thank you for watching part one and we'll have more questions and answers coming soon in part two. <laughs>